I've never really understood why some people don't consider Gremlins a Christmas movie. They just say that it takes place at Christmas, but it's not a Christmas movie. And I strongly disagree with that. It has lots of Christmas aspects, and it actually really does make me excited for Christmas. Home Alone is considered a Christmas classic today when it came out in 1990, and that's pretty much just about a kid that's trying to defend his home from burglars by building booby traps. Is that Christmas? I don't think so. Point proven. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Gabriel and I love to rank movies. If you can relate, you're definitely going to want to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. But with that said, let's get into this video. Round one is thrills. Typically, Christmas films don't really have thrills unless you're talking Krampus, but I don't want to get started on that film. But Gremlins is classified under the horror comedy genre on Google, so what can I say? This film has several scenes that I thought were pretty thrilling, such as the kitchen scene, the climax, and when the Christmas tree started attacking Lynn Peltzer. Which sounds not very Christmassy, but when you look at the film as a whole, the Gremlins being puppets makes it fun enough for me to make it a yearly holiday viewing. The second film focuses more on comedy I feel like, so I think it lacked the action the first film had. I do think it had multiple entertaining action scenes, but there wasn't nearly enough for me to fully appreciate what this film was going for. Gremlins won the new batch zero. Round two is plot. The 1984 feature-length film Gremlins is actually based on the book written by Roald Dahl, The Gremlins. It was his first book being published in 1943, and he had anticipated for it to be made into one of Disney's animated films, but we all know how that turned out. Chris Columbus took that concept and wanted to make the live-action horror film Gremlins. Randall Peltzer is trying to find the perfect gift for his son when he finds one at the shop in Chinatown. The shopkeeper gives in to selling him the species called Mogwai, but warns him that they must never be exposed to bright light, water, or to feed him after midnight. They break the rules, and the gang of gremlins decide to tear up the town on Christmas Eve. Personally, I think that is a pretty good plot, and then when they get Steven Spielberg to work on the film, it's sure to be good. And to its luck, I think it is. And I think most people will agree with me basing it off its reviews. The second film starts off by saying that the store that Randall Peltzer buys Gizmo in in the first film has been destroyed, and the Mogwai finds his way into a skyscraper. Billy Peltzer and his fiance Kate, who've had to deal with the gremlins on a rampage before, figure out that Gizmo and other Mogwai are inside the building downtown. They try to stop the gremlins from running it off into the city, but this new batch of Mogwai might be uncontrollable. Most films that have this type of concept just take the plot and template of the first film and completely do the same thing, just change the setting and some characters, and that's kind of what this film feels like to me. It's the plot of the first gremlins, just minus Christmas, minus thrills, and for that reason, Gremlins 1 is getting this point. Gremlins 2, the new batch, 0. Round three is comedy. Gremlins has two types of fans. There's either people that think this film is terrifying or dumb fun. I'm personally in the dumb fun camp because... How could you think a movie about puppets is terrifying? This film is just a crazy spectacle of chaos. It's not as much about the verbal jokes, but the fact that the Gremlins are so wacky makes this film a really funny roller coaster ride. It goes back and forth from being a light-hearted comedy to being a dark monster movie, so I can't really say this is one of the funniest Christmas movies I've ever seen. The second film definitely goes for more of a comedic tone. 100%. Let me just show you the final scene of the film. Exactly. I'm not sure if I actually like where they took this film and how they made the gremlins, but this film is pretty funny. It's not that good, but it's pretty funny. There are lots of clever gags that are pretty unexpected that actually made me laugh, but both of these films aren't hilarious. This was a tough one, but I think the new batch is taking this point. Gremlins 2, the new batch 1. Round 4, Cast. 
The main stars in Gremlins include Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, and Howie Mandel. Some side characters are played by Dick Miller, Corey Feldman, Hoyt Axton, and Polly Holiday. This is a pretty good cast, if you ask me, with some pretty big names such as Dick Miller, who is in some really famous films like The Terminator, The Burbs, and then Gremlins. Like I said, it also stars Ho Polly Holiday, who is in some really great films like Mrs. Doubtfire, The Parent Trap 1998, and once again, Gremlins. Gremlins, the new batch main stars are mostly the same, with Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, Howie Mandel, and now promoting Dick Miller to having a larger role. This time around, the side cast includes Christopher Lee, who is best known for his work as Count Dooku in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, Haviland Morris, who I thought gave a terrible performance to a terrible character, and John Glover, who is in some good movies like Scrooge, Shazam, and... Wait, 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 wait a second. Sean Glover's in Batman and Robin. No, uh-uh, this point's going to the original Gremlins. Gremlins 3, the new batch, won. The final round is puppetry. This might seem kind of like an odd round, but to make the movie starring puppets, you have to have a good team behind it, and you have to make them look real. Now, you're probably assuming the second film is going to win this round because it's newer, but that's not always the case. The original Gremlins has amazing puppetry because of how crazy the things are that the Gremlins have to do, even though comparing them to some of Jim Hens' puppets, like the Muppets and characters in Sesame Street, they don't stand out as well, even though they're amazing. The second film actually doesn't have as good of puppets as the first film had. Considering it came out six years later, I thought they would have improved, but they actually look pretty bad. When they make Gizmo dance, it's cute and all, but this point is going to the original Gremlins. Gremlins for the new batch, one. As of now, I absolutely despise Gremlins, the new batch, so the clear winner is the original Gremlins. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. I wasn't really expecting for this video to get very many views considering all of the Mandalorian hype going around, but with that said, stay tuned and subscribe to Cinema Ranks.